Hi everyone, uh, my name is Nina and I'm the Events and Communications Officer here at the EAUC. Welcome to today's exchange webinar. The title of this webinar is Whole Earth, Using an Exhibition as a Catalyst for Innovation in HE. Thank you for registering and thank you also to Dr. Stephen Scoffham and Dr. Adriana consorte McRae from Canterbury Christchurch University who will be leading this webinar for us today. Just so you all know, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to the EAUC website later on today. So just a little bit of housekeeping to go over before we get started. I'm hoping that everyone can hear me well. For the time being, I have placed all of your microphones onto mute um, and that's just to keep background noise to a minimum. There will be some opportunities to ask questions uh, towards the end of the webinar, so please feel free to unmute your microphones when we get to the Q&A section, and you can do this by clicking on the microphone button to the, next to your name. You can also use the chat box to ask questions if you don't want to speak into your microphone. To use this, please click on the chat button in the top left-hand corner of your screen. A pop-up box will then appear, and you can send me any questions you have by typing them into this box. So that's all from me for now, and I will pass you over to Stephen and Adriana. Hi, Nina. Hi. Hi. Hi nice to see you. Good morning. I'm going to be uh, talking about the exhibition at the beginning, and then Adriana is going to take us a bit further on uh, in the second half of what we've got to say. So um, I'll start off. Whole Earth uh, is a major exhibition. It's uh, 60 meters long, uh, which means that it uh, stretches. We put it up around our tennis courts, four tennis courts around the edge of that. Gives you an idea of the enormous size of it. And it's, a, it's, it's about a meter or so in depth. And what it does is it explores the strap line underneath the title there, aligning human systems and natural systems is what it's about. And it's drawing attention to the way in which we need to bring the natural world and the way that we're living our lives together in a more holistic way than we are at the moment. The picture I think makes the point underneath the title. Uh, and uh, it's particularly focused at universities and students. Uh, there are the thinking behind it uh, is that uh, the students at university today are the leaders of tomorrow and with that in mind uh, we need to see that students are meaningfully engaged and introduced to sustainability issues in their disciplines. So Whole Earth looks at a whole range of different uh, university disciplines and subject areas and challenges the reader, students and tutors, to think about ways in which their courses could be and should be uh, modified or changed to take account of 21st century realities. Uh, that picture you can see there, uh, right in the middle, uh, with the white hair, is Mark Edwards. And Mark is the uh, inspiration behind the exhibition. He's a, uh, the photographer who took all the photographs. And we first met Mark. Mark came to Canterbury uh, to uh, launch, uh, do an introductory talk for us in uh, a, a couple of years back and we discovered that he was working on this exhibition and he came, we were all a bit in awe of him as he, uh, we've, uh, uh, when we first met him uh, because he has a big name, he's uh, uh, possibly uh, one of the world's first pioneering environmental photographers and, and, and actually he turned out to be very friendly and talkable to and uh, we struck up a bit of a, a, a friendship and he uh, started to talk with us about how universities work. But one of the th key things about the exhibition is that it opens uh, with uh, a stand, uh, the, the, the Hard Rain uh, song from Bob Dylan and all the uh, words from Hard Rain are there on the exhibition boards. And Mark had, uh, had actually prepared an earlier exhibition which was called Hard Rain, which is all about environmental problems. But this exhibition, whole earth is about environmental solutions rather than problems, so it takes it a stage further. Uh, the panels are, are very visual uh, and uh, large photographs, stunning photographs by Mark are, are a key part of it. Uh, there's a lot of text, it takes, it, if you want to read all the text, it took the best part of 40 minutes or an hour to go around reading it depending on how you did it, but obviously you can dip into it in different ways. But one of the things we wanted to point out is the green panel on the left-hand side, uh, and uh, the, these 
panels are the university challenges. And so the idea is that that's a challenge to uh, students and tutors to think about their courses. And I think one of the things to say right at the very beginning is that Whole Earth has an impact not only on tutors, not only on students, but also across the whole university community. So it was picked up on and was very much uh, uh, brought to the attention of support staff, university managers uh, uh, at all levels, uh, trustees uh, 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 as well as uh, cleaners and, and, and other support staff. So its impact, although it is actually targeted at tutors and, and, and students, its impact is much wider across the thinking of the university community. And the other thing about it, uh, we'll return to this later, is that it actually invigorates the estate because it's taken, in our particular cases, some areas of grass which people just walk across or round and turn them into a, 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 a living learning resource. So it's been really exciting to have it yes, here. Yes, one of the things about the challenges is that uh, what they proposed was that universities responded to the challenges themselves and came up to come up with solutions, yeah? The, Absolutely, to, to and, share with and we should say that Canterbury was one of 17, I think, universities uh, on the initial uh, who launch uh, in the UK. So it isn't just at Canterbury, it's been at a whole range of universities. And then actually the international launch was at the Eden Project uh, uh, in Cornwall. Um, so whole of the Canterbury, uh, you can see it there on the lawn. We were blessed really, it was early September. So we launched it at the beginning of the academic year. And uh, you can see that what we did is uh, actually finding the mechanics of displaying uh, so, so much material was tricky. Uh, we ended up setting up or getting a, a company to set up some, uh, uh, some scaffolding. And you can see that the scaffolding actually provides a really nice sort of uh, slanting, sloping uh, tableau that uh, people could walk around and look at. And we were, as I say, blessed with a very nice sunny day for the opening. And we were particularly lucky uh, to uh, be able to uh, uh, get a, a lot of support from the, well, the university really rallied behind it uh, and, and saw this as an opportunity to uh, uh, promote an agenda which is very much part of, uh, of Christchurch thinking. And the fact that Christchurch was at this particular stage uh, very keen to embrace sustainability in different ways, uh, not only in this state but also in its academic portfolio, and in its wider thinking. And the support came not only from the sort of grassroots level, but also from the trustees and from the senior management level. That goes together. Actually, looking at that picture, if you look at the back, um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm pointing, but I can see my screen, but obviously that's not going to work, so I'll stop pointing. If you look at the back, uh, you can see the yurt, uh, and that, again, is a, uh, a, a, a tent. It's a tent to, uh, from Central Asia, where uh, the nomadic, uh, uh, Turkic uh, people of Central Asia travel around using the arts to, uh, as their homes. Uh, we use the yurt as a thinking space, as a as a space where students and staff can get together in all sorts of different ways. And we move the yurt around the campus in different ways as well. So you can see that in the background. For the exhibition, the yurt was lined with paper where people could give feedback. So we talk about the feedback uh, later as well. Good. Right, so uh, I don't know if you recognize uh, Michael Mopogo, but uh, Michael Mopogo is, uh, he's an uh, honorary fellow of the university, uh, also uh, much more famous as, as the author of War Horse and as a children's author of well over 100 books and, uh, and a brilliant speaker. Yes. And we were lucky to secure uh, Michael uh, uh, agreed to come and open the exhibition and to give an associated lecture. So that, that gave whole earth exactly the uh, type of launch that, that we were delighted to have. And I think we're going to hear, everyone's going to, if we can get the uh, wizardry to work. Yeah, so yeah, there I have he a chance is. to hear part of uh, his opening of the exhibition. So Michael's can beginning to talk, but I don't think we've got the sound. Um, no, we can't hear, we can't. We can't you can't hear him. No. Right, well we can read. We can read what he says. Um, but the reason it is wonderful that this exhibition is here is that young people are going to see it. 
and you can change young people. Once you get old, it's finished. You made up your mind and became, become rigid, log, locked into the grid system. These ones who are just starting out, and whether it is here in Kerala or wherever in the world, the more young people whose hearts you can touch, whose intellects you can touch at this age, the more change there is to turn things around. We've spent quite a bit of my, I've spent quite a bit of my life teaching and writing and doing it mostly for younger children. The Jesuits got it right, the younger the better. The children of today have got to learn to grow up with a love of this planet. If you don't start with a love of it, knowing that it is their place, it's not just on telling, then it will never happen. So Michael was inspiring and he's absolutely, you know, sort of hit the nail on the head with the point that one of the features of sustainability and sustainability education is that it's a little bit different from, it's not, it's not just the, the day job as it were, you, you do have to, if you're going to be convincing, you have to think that it matters. And if you don't care uh, and you just say, well, I'm just going to, I don't mind what happens to the world and I don't want to respond, I don't want to act responsibly, uh, then uh, you know, that's the end of the story. So uh, we've got a number of campuses uh, and we took the exhibition to uh, two of our other campuses. This one's the campus in, in the Medway area in the middle of Kent. Uh, that picture is actually quite interesting in that it, uh, you can see it's a different sort of area, but that's outside the main entrance. So it's having a huge impact in all sorts of different ways. And the lady on the left, who is, uh, 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 you can see her full face, uh, she is uh, uh, one of our Pro Vice Chancellors. And we'll hear a little bit more about Deborah Teasdale in a, min in a minute when we've got a quote from her about how the exhibition affected her. Uh, I was just going to add that there was space for feedback in all the different. Yes. places we took the exhibition and you can see a student writing on a panel. And we used the yurt uh, uh, for, for that at one point as well, didn't we? Yeah. Right, this frame, uh, this is showing the our internal and external magazine uh, called Inspire and for the first time in the history of this uh, particular uh, uh, journal uh, we had an entire issue on sustainability and on whole, whole earth and that was something which the uh, communications uh, side of the university got behind. Uh, they saw the huge potential of this and uh, every member of staff uh, received a copy of, a printed copy of Inspire uh, when they came uh, or started in the academic year in, uh, in September. And again, that is an example of the way that the university uh, saw this as a major opportunity for uh, 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 moving forward an, uh, an agenda which it wanted to move forward. But interestingly, and you've got to be a bit thick skinned and tough in this game, haven't you? Uh, we had some staff who kicked back and said uh, they felt that this was a bit ideological. They, they said that they didn't want to be manipulated in this way. Uh, we had people complaining that it was a print version and it, why wasn't it all online? Well, the answer was if it had been online, they probably wouldn't have read it. But I don't think they read the print version either, but uh, uh, we got, uh, it was a bit hopeful. We were a bit, mm -hmm. we were so excited about having the, the journal uh, dedicated to whole earth and uh, we found it a little bit uh, hurtful, but you just have to get thick skin. Um, one of the other things um, about whole earth is the principle behind it was that universities in the UK could and should, if they could, cascade it to different uh, uh, partner institutions. We've had a long term link with uh, institutions overseas in India. And so um, we were able to activate this as it were. And I went with the exhibition to Kerala in South India. And uh, we had a group of students, we got uh, our links there. We have a group of postgraduate students who were there uh, doing a placement. So we had 20 students there and we used this opportunity uh, for a symposium, and that's one of our students talking to Indian uh, school children. And there, 
our, our students. The Indian girl on the right is actually a, a UK student from Christchurch, but there are a couple of our students. It, we had a joint symposium with the uh, science uh, uh, on science education and sustainable development with the Department of Botany in the University of Kerala, uh, and it was a two-day event. And uh, it was a genuinely a very much a, a shared symposium. Half the inputs were from Indian uh, uh, contributors, and half of them were from UK contributors. And it was a, it was, I think, a remarkable event. And again, the official support was very clear. Uh, the deputy vice chancellor of the, of the uh, of Kerala State University not only came to open it, but spent most of the morning. Uh, in the exhibition, normally when the vice chancellor comes to open an exhibition, he says a few words and then says, I'm terribly sorry, I will have to leave in five minutes time. And that's the last you, you see of them. But in this particular occasion, uh, we had very clear support from senior levels within uh, the State University. We, we have a quote from, um, yeah, Dr. Lau. Yes, Lau, yes, Dr. Lau from the Kerala, uh, Kerala University Department of Botany. And he's been a, a very steady partner, isn't he? Well, I've known Mark, I'm uh, sorry, I've known Lau uh, since 1999, so it's nearly 20 years. And we, from the very beginning, we started to talk about ways in which uh, we could develop uh, uh, partnerships and joint activity around sustainability. So this is wonderful. Um, there's someone's microphone on and we can hear a lot of feedback and, and background sounds, just, just to let you know. Dear I've, Mark I've just, and just sorted it. Okay. Oh, oh that's wonderful, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so it says, Dear Mark and Stephen, I'm back home after a very fruitful week in Bangalore. Things worked in a fantastically more effective way than I anticipated. The banners were on display in three campuses. Beyond that, I had the opportunity to directly address about 1,250 students in nine spells of two hours each. I combined your stories with mine, and Mark's video was viewed in state-of-the-art auditoriums by all. The feedback has been overwhelming. And just um, to put a little bit of context on that, Bangalore is... Uh, uh, Lal took the exhibition uh, on the bus to Bangalore. It was an overnight journey. It's about the same distance as London to Edinburgh. Uh, and uh, it was an extraordinary amount of energy that was required to make that happen. Bangalore is a, a different state and uh, uh, the distances and uh, actually traveling, in India, traveling that sort of distance is a thousand miles. Yeah. It's further than London to Edinburgh. Uh, but the distances in, the, the, in, in India always seem a lot more because the, the round trip. it's a round trip and it's slower. So he did a wonderful job. And there are the students uh, in one of the colleges. This is a oh, this is the women's college. Yes. Do you want to talk about it? was that? another event. This was, oh, a, a, right, this was a national event. event for uh, uh, delegates from across India. Uh, so the, the delegates may have themselves have traveled several thousand miles to come to this. And this is a, the women's, uh, uh, it's, it's a women's event. And they were picking up on the exhibition there and using it as part of uh, their work. And actually the exhibition is, in India has gone to seven different campuses and uh, produced, a, had a major impact, I think, each time and each place that it went to. I won't tell you that it was difficult to get it to India and how we had to struggle over the shipping and, and the technicalities. Uh, that's a learning curve, but uh, it got there in the end and it's been used to dramatic effect. Now, the, um, we're getting towards the end of, of the sort of inputs of, our, of, of the initial introduction, uh, but uh, I, what we've called this little section here is you know, uh, using whole earth as a catalyst and that's exactly it. it. It triggers things. And the point about an exhibition is we're trying to promote sustainability and sustainability thinking. We try and do it in lots and lots of different ways. And uh, it, each way has its merits. Uh, this one, which starts from a musical starting point of a Dylan song and an artistic photographic input of, of major proportions in the, in the exhibition itself. Uh, uh, taps into as a way of communicating uh, that we don't uh, use, I think, enough in trying to in trying to uh, develop 
uh, and change the culture of our institution. So it's really been good uh, to have wonderful opportunity to have this exhibition uh, at hand. We have a, an overview of the, the impact on different um, areas of the university. So uh, within every faculty and mm -hmm. every school, uh, there's a different response and they've responded in different ways and of course that's the whole point so uh, we had the media uh, media students uh, looking at it from a photographic angle and looking at it that way then we've had uh, uh, more directed inputs and, and and from the teacher education and uh, uh, school of uh, teacher education where groups of students have uh, taken an individual panel and looked at it and responded it in their own way uh, interestingly uh, the school of criminology and justice have picked up the gauntlet and talked. You, you don't normally, and people don't normally think of policing as something where, where sustainability features largely. But of course, if you think about the of communities and community, what well-being and, and, and prosperity actually means, uh, then it, it touches absolutely goes to the core of 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 of, of community policing. So very interesting uh, angle there, and of course on the health side. Uh, there are, uh, the, we've got a big uh, uh, health uh, uh, school here, uh, the way in which nursing and uh, nurse practice and, and indeed uh, the use of uh, materials and, and, and resources in, in medical settings opens up another uh, very interesting uh, way of thinking. So the point is that every uh, part of the university can and has responded in different ways. We have a bit more detail about the, the early childhood um, engagement. Right, so this is uh, a couple of tutors who, uh, you can see a wordle there, and that's uh, interesting responses. You, there's no way in which you're going to know how people are going to respond, but the wordle gives an idea of uh, the responses when uh, students were, first of all, uh, introduced to some global problems, and then uh, went out to explore the exhibition in yeah, their own way. They, they saw the Hard Rain film as well, which is the film that talks about problems. And uh, later on they saw the exhibition, which is more about answers. But uh, yes, there's all sorts of responses. And it's not unusual that, uh, uh, to, to get a, 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 that sense of either, I feel overwhelmed or I feel angry. Those are two quite common responses. We have a quote from Deborah Teasdale, the Dean of Faculty of Health and Wellbeing, showing uh, another side of contact with this exhibition as well. Um, Within the competing demands of daily life, the impact of visual imagery to jolt individuals, individuals out of their comfort zone should never be underestimated. The physical presence of the whole Earth exhibition overtaking large unoccupied green spaces provided a point at which to stop, to pause, for hundreds of people within our community. As I explored whole earth, I felt as if I was submerged in a small oasis of quiet. The exhibition generated sparks of curiosity, conversation, and discussions between strangers. And for me, it raised fundamental questions about the way in which I live my life and how I enact my role. It made me think about the opportunity within the university to play a leading role in raising aspirations for a sustainable future for all. Oh, just before we move on, I was just going to say we, we invited Debbie Cotton from Plymouth uh, to come and open uh, the exhibition when we took it to Medway. But of course, the... Um, Ultimately, what we're trying to do is to uh, uh, find ways in which students who are at universities today take on and engage with sustainability. And so this particular picture shows one of our tutors uh, with a group of students. We're just going to have a quote from Sadie Barton, who is uh, a student in the business school. Uh, at one of those sort of eureka moments where she suddenly sort of realizes why this agenda is so important. I have to admit, I walked past whole earth without reading it until my tutor sent us all out to look at it and write an essay on the issues it presents. Then I got it. 
the impact my plastic, my meat, my waste paper is making on the planet, which is keeping me alive. Then I felt anger towards the people I saw as role models who never taught me about sustainable development. What's good is that the exhibition doesn't just show problems. It shows what my generation and the universities can do to bring about real change. Now I'm going to campaign to make those changes. I think that's absolutely you know, it's stunning, isn't it, to think that that's what, it, that's what we're here for. That's why it's worth doing this job, because yes. it does make such an impact. And you're not going to win, you're not going to win all of them, but even if you only have a few uh, uh, students who are responding like that, that is really powerful, and of course it has a ripple effect. And what, yeah, what we see from the Deborah and, and um, all the people who gave us feedback is this building of the community of practice. It's just one more way to bring people in and uh, keep this, this contact. So, um, those were the sort of direct inputs. The last thing I'm going to talk about before I hand over to Adriana is uh, the, the, some of the more uh, unexpected or tangential impacts. One of the things that um, is part of Christchurch is that it is a Church of England foundation. And uh, we thought that it would be interesting and valuable to explore Whole Earth from a, a faith perspective. And so this picture here uh, is from uh, a symposium that we held uh, about a month after the exhibition was put up, uh, which brought together the two, it was a two hour debate involving a Buddhist, Islamic, humanist and Church of England perspective. And that's our Dean of Chapel talking in the chapel, introducing uh, the Interfaith Council uh, discussion, which um, uh, opens up an other ways of thinking about sustainability. And we didn't have a Catholic representative, but of course at that time, it was exactly the moment when the Pope had circulated his encyclical on climate change uh, to uh, church, uh, the Catholic Church around the world and had attracted a lot of media attention. So one of the other things which we did uh, uh, towards the end of this year, what we're talking about is a, a year in Whole Earth at Canterbury Christ Church, is that uh, we held a, a, a conference on the, in the summer. Again, we had some lovely sunny weather and that conference uh, was a chance to uh, uh, look at Whole Earth in lots of different ways. And we involved about 20 or 30 uh, tutors from the university, as well as quite a lot of outside speakers. Adriana's just holding up something. Those are the conference proceedings, uh, which are uh, yeah, available if people want to uh, see what, what's going on here. I'll just show the closer. There we go. So uh, uh, that, in a way, it gave us the chance to sort of consolidate a little bit and say, well, this is where we've got to. Uh, this is a, it's always a, a matter of moving on to the next stage and uh, as a process. But we uh, wanted to celebrate where we got to with that uh, conference. And then if we move on, we've got um, one of the other uh, responses. Uh, this was actually part of the conference. Uh, where we've got art therapists, art psychotherapists, who practice in hospices, schools, uh, hospitals, and uh, care homes in Kent and Sussex, so in our wider region. They came and, uh, uh, and uh, had a looked at the exhibition and responded it, responded it, responded to it uh, creatively and artistically. And as art therapists, uh, it is the artistic and therapeutic uh, response uh, to particular stimuli that, 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 that is their uh, professional focus. So they had a, a special interest in social justice, that's what they're working with, and they're guided by Tony Wright. And uh, their, our Futures Initiative uh, here at Christchurch funded uh, projects from staff and students as well, who wanted to develop a resp uh, response to Whole Earth. I don't know if you talked about them. So many of these projects came and um, presented their results in, in the conference. Just what I, I wanted to say. Yep, and then we go on to some of the other uh, uh, 
artistic and other responses, uh, which um, you, you probably spotted that on each of these, where we get the headings, we're using a photo from the exhibition uh, uh, against each of the uh, numbered titles. Yeah, they all photos from Mark Edwards, uh, some taken to, uh, also during events, which is yeah. fantastic. Um, what we are calling unexpected events, some of them were creative responses to the exhibition, very much in line with uh, the, where the exhibition came from musically. So I got together with Tony Wright, who was uh, in, uh, the, the chair of the Women Staff Network at, at Christchurch, to try and think of a, a woman, a womanist or feminist response to what the exhibition proposed. So on International Women's Day, on the 8th of March, we uh, organized the first of uh, a series of workshops. And um, the idea was to unleash creative and emotional responses. So the first one was a creative workshop led by Victoria Field, who's a writer and poetry therapist, focusing on the challenges that women face towards a future that is fair and sustainable in social, economic, environmental, and personal terms. So uh, Victoria was very clever working with everyone. We had staff and students, students from the Feminist Society, uh, all women working together. So weaving connections between the exhibition and the International Women's Day. And then uh, from this workshop, um, Vicky put together different um, parts of uh, writings that contributed by all the, the people who attended and wrote this wonderful uh, poem, brought together, bringing together all the individual bits uh, into a poem called The Wonder Web of Life. I'll just uh, read this extract here. What are we eating? What are we really eating? I'm really eating grain, seeds, nourishment. Where from? A kitchen, farms, labor, women. Food at the family's table, plenty, blessed by gratitude. Food in the rich west, waste, bitter, poisoned by guilt. Women are food, all praise, all praise to the great web. It was a, a, a beautiful uh, event and opportunity to, to be working with colleagues we, we never meet. And the, the next, event was um, called Whole Earth, Many, Hand, Many Hands Make a Light of Future. So the poetic response was followed by a textile workshop to create a textile artwork as a long lasting legacy of the women's response to Whole Earth. And the, the artwork is actually behind us here. And it's yes. going to be... Uh, yes, you can see it. That's it. It's, it. You probably can't see it in detail, but everybody's contribution is there. It's a, it's yes. It's a collage. So there was a, a, a workshop, it was offered twice. Um, was inspired by the traditions of women all over the world who sit around a circle to talk and discuss issues and, and their family. And um, there's... Both workshops, in the end, that, that's the launch of the artwork during our conference, and this is a, just a photograph of what you can see behind us, is made of little individual uh, pieces of textile work and the words of the poem. So it, it's a celebration of the contribution of women uh, to a fair and sustainable world. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, do you want to say well, um, you want to say? one of the participants, um, Eng, what's Eng's title is? Uh, from the, Tan Yok Eng is my, my wife. She's from the business school and uh, she was one of the participants. And then she was so inspired by it that she ran a workshop during the conference on uh, just textile work and brought lots of people together as well. So it's like a spin-off 
<laughs> from unexpected, <laughs> not planned. So this last section, uh, we're just going to wrap things up by saying, well, what's the impact? What's it? Uh, this is one year of the whole world's exhibition at Canterbury Christ Church and uh, overseas, as it were, with our Indian colleagues. So um, we had feedback in several different ways. We run a questionnaire and ask people who had contact or used the exhibition some way to respond. And uh, also we had feedback from the banners in the art and some writing from students at different points. And um, this is part of the feedback. Some <laughs> um, students who visited the exhibition responded by doing drawings and uh, thoughts um, and their reactions to it. In general, we can say that the majority of our responders are people who actually gave us feedback. They engaged uh, by taking students to see the exhibition. So most staff engaged by doing that. And uh, uh, some used uh, some of the resources that were available, like we have the banners in PDF and um, text that, that uh, and the books as well, which could be used in the classroom. And they use this to encourage discussion about sustainability, uh, responding to the challenges that were proposed and questions related to specific disciplines. So they could bring it and in, in use according to uh, the background of what they were teaching. So they incorporated ideas from the exhibition, also in formal, in formal assessment activities to make sure the students were uh, actually reflecting. Um, we had feedback talking about ch uh, how the exhibition affected them personally, as well as professionally, sometimes. And um, many respondents agreed the exhibition raised important questions about even the content of what they teach and uh, provided important and good quality information about sustainable uh, living. And uh, some felt that it raised the profile of areas that they were already teaching. Uh, other felt that alerted to new ideas and new thinking. We asked about barriers to incorporate uh, sustainability into the teaching and to use the exhibition. And uh, mostly was uh, reference to lack of time, but also apathy from colleagues were the most of the barriers that they, they talked about. Um, but there was a strong evidence that the exhibition had a significant impact uh, from different sources of, of feedback that we had. This is just one of them thought-provoking, sad, concerning, and scary, but the world needs to stop its wars. Yes, as well. So the responses that we've got there are very varied, and here are some of the uh, responses to the survey, which vary from, I hardly knew the exhibition was there, which is pretty difficult to not know that it was there, seeing as it's so large, uh, to the photos were wonderful, it sparked a lot of debate amongst the students, it was empowering, it, why wasn't there something on local in, issues, it was dull and simplistic. You were going to get the whole lot uh, and you're not going to win them all, as I say, but what I think and what we think is that the exhibition was part of a process whereby over the last decade sustainability has been slowly but steadily moving up the agenda uh, within the university. And that's a, a, a tricky one because there are lots of other agendas and of course a very big one at the moment is student recruitment. Uh, but with multiple agendas, uh, sustainability has to uh, uh, fight its corner as it were. But what we're seeing is sustainability is moving up the agenda within the university as a whole and the whole earth uh, has is, uh, been made a very valuable contribution to that in unexpected ways uh, it galvanized and touched into and tapped into 
uh, energies and enthusiasms that we weren't aware of. And we end up with a community of practice, a community both of students and, um, and on the longer term of, of, of permanent staff who are more aware of sustainability and engaging with it more creatively. And I just wanted to make people aware, we've got a, a full report uh, about uh, Whole Earth, um, what has happened here and uh, different projects, different ideas and feedback on request. So if you want to, uh, we will continue Right, we are um, conclusions about right, that, yes. and we we are. I think it's time that we hand it back to you, Nina. Um, uh, we, do, do you want to um, have any more concluding thoughts about uh, the exhibition before the questions and answers? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's fine. Um, okay, I, I just wanted to add that uh, there were uh, the the multidisciplinary, cross disciplinary. Um, nature of the exhibition was very important to show that it's not only about environment, it's not only about mm. recycling mm. or yeah. social, it's everything together. Sorry. Right, Nina. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So has anybody got any questions for Stephen and Adriana? If you do, um, the best thing to do is next to your name, which should be on the right hand side of the screen, um, there should be a little microphone button to the right of your name that, that will currently have a line through it. So if you'd like to take, if you'd like to click on that button, it will take you off mute so that you can, you can ask any questions or alternatively um, use the, the chat button um, at the top of your screen to, to type any questions to either you can send them to everybody or you can send them just to either myself um, or Adriana and Stephen directly. So if, if we give um, a, a minute or two for any questions to come in. Okay, I've got nothing. Oh, I've just had one. Um, so a question from Claire, um, who has said um, that she's interested to know how many students you reached and did you record numbers to be able to gauge that? Right. Oh, can, can, can you hear me now? Am I on? Yes, yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Right. Um, the short answer is we don't know how many students we, we reached um, because it's a sort of cascade thing. So uh, a tutor who was interested in the exhibition uh, might have then decided to bring uh, uh, 30 or so students to come and uh, use the exhibition uh, and we wouldn't know about it. We do know about some of them, we don't know about the others. So uh, I, in assessing the impact on, the num on students, uh, it's difficult to quantify in terms of numbers and I don't know whether it would be terribly helpful in a way because uh, it's more what what do you take away from it rather than the numbers who have actually seen it? In a sense, everybody in the university saw it. Uh, as, I, as we said, some people managed to walk past it and hardly knew that it was there, but even those people knew that it was there because they're telling us that they knew it wasn't. Uh, it, it's, <laughs> you see what I mean? Uh, they hardly knew it was there. They hardly knew. They actually had to walk around it. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that helps you, Claire. Do you want to come back on that? I, I, if I can uh, add something, we, we tried to capture feedback and uh, in, in, it ended up being more qualitative than quantitative just because of what Stephen said. It's very difficult to capture what people were, were doing. Fortunately, uh, not only a, a circle that we have contact with, not only our close uh, circle of, of colleagues involved in sustainability were um, responding to the exhibition yeah and we sent a questionnaire to the whole university asking for feedback and we had very little feedback from there uh, so very difficult to capture but uh, the importance of the, the the qualitative responses was very high i think to show uh, at least the, the width of uh, of response mm. okay. Okay, and um, 
Claire's just come back to say uh, that's really useful. Uh, we need to report on the progress of events at Edinburgh Uni where Claire's based. Um, so she's so she's always interested to learn how others measure impact. So so thank you for that. Can I can I add something, Claire, which is that uh, what surprised me and some of our, our colleagues here is the impact on support staff, the impact on a whole range of uh, what I would think of as a sort of uh, administrative, managerial and support side of the university uh, because we, Adriana and myself, are focusing more on the academic activities. But um, this suddenly brought sustainability as an issue and as it, to the attention of a whole range of uh, uh, university staff who don't normally engage in these sort of things. And that, that was really important. Mm -hmm. I think we, we often have discussions about qualitative and quantitative because I come from life sciences and, and I'm used to using questionnaires and measuring things. But uh, many of my colleagues are, are, uh, come from a different background. And you, you, I think you, your arguments are very strong, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, it's like that we you believe can, in you, that. You can't really yes. measure yeah. all yeah. the everything that comes out of looking at a picture isn't it but you know that people will carry that with them so the the, the response might come a year later it might come when you have the opportunity yes. to express and or might come immediately so that there's that too okay great thank you um has anybody else got any questions um that they would like to ask let's just give another Awesome. While people are thinking, um, if there's any further questions, uh, just uh, to let you know that if you're interested in Whole Earth, uh, then uh, the best thing is to go to the Hard Rain website, wh where, uh, wh where Mark Edwards will uh, undoubtedly uh, uh, respond to you. He's uh, been the inspiration of, behind this exhibition and this whole event what we've been presenting to you is one year of whole earth at canterbury christchurch one of the questions i've got is well okay how, is that it you know uh, have we finished with the exhibition or is are there other ways of using it and uh, that's an interesting one for us really because we don't know because we're playing it through uh, but it would be uh, important to see this i think as an ongoing process and we see the whole process of, of developing a sustainability mindset in a university is a long game. It's not a short win. It's not a, there's no quick fixes. We're looking at at least five, ten year time frames, not uh, two or three months. Hey, it would be a ni nice to have the feedback from, from the people attending. Um, what do you think we could do with the exhibition from now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any thoughts? All thoughts welcome. So, are you are you happy for me to um to share your email addresses on the on the follow up email, and then people could could get in touch with you directly if they've got any thoughts on that? Is that okay? Absolutely, no Great. problem at all. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. Oh, by the way, the address for the Hard Rain website is on the first page. Okay. Presentation, which we'll, we'll be sharing, isn't it? Uh, yes, and I will. I'll include that on my email as well, so people have got everything that they they need on there too. So that that's that's fine. Okay, I haven't had. Um, th there's no more questions come in, and I can see that nobody's um, taken their microphones off off mute. Um, so, is there anything else you want to cover before we before we wrap up? I'd just like to say, thank uh, everybody who's uh, joined in the, the webinar, just joining us. Thank you very much indeed for your interest. And um, maybe we'll meet at a conference or uh, meet e electronically through email. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for me. Thanks. Okay, yeah, and I, and I just want to say thank you very much to you both for, for, for all the work you've put into today's webinar as well. Um, it was a, a really interesting session, so, so thank you ever so much. Um, as, as we've said, um, 
I will make the presentation slides available um, on our website later on today and I will also make a recording of this webinar available. So I will send um, a link to that to you all um, this afternoon so you, so you will have that from me shortly. Um, and please feel free to share um, the recording of the webinar and the slides with, with other members of your team um, as you wish. Um, and I will also send out a short survey just, just to gain some feedback from you all. Um, and that's it. So huge thanks again to Stephen and Adriana and thank you all for joining us. Um, and I hope to see you on another webinar soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.